Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian here with Kaufman Home Automation. We updated our bulbs and our plugs both to uh, utilize ESP Home's uh, dashboard import feature. So I wanted to get on here real quick and show you what that's all about and how to get this set up. Importing into the ESP Home dashboard like this has a couple really big benefits. Um, first of all, you're always gonna get any of the updates that we release automatically through the ESP Home dashboard. So everything you buy uh, from us, you're always gonna be able to stay on top of all the updates right here. And then secondly, is that you're gonna be able to get in here and rename everything in one step. Um, so instead of having to get in Home Assistant and rename every entity one at a time like you've had to do in the past, now it's just one uh, field in the YAML file and it's gonna rename everything for you all at once. To get started, just hit Adopt here on the Discovered card and it'll ask you for your Wi-Fi credentials if it's the first time, uh, but otherwise just hit Adopt here and skip here because we're gonna edit the file and then install in a minute. You'll see the card added here as a new device and then also it will have created the actual YAML file within the ESP Home config directory here. Um, so you can open it up either way to edit. Um, so we'll just look at it here. Now your product may get delivered with an older firmware that doesn't get automatically detected by ESP Home. Um, so instead of having to download the binary file and update, update the firmware first and then going through this whole process, um, what I'd recommend is you can just create this file uh, manually within the ESP Home config directory and then just grab the YAML off our GitHub. Um, this YAML here is just this exact same file. Um, so you can just create it manually and it'll work the exact same way. A critical first step is going to be figuring out the IP address of the bulb because uh, ESP Home uses the name uh, to connect via MDNS. So the second you change the name, then ESP Home is no longer able to connect to the bulb. Um, one easy way to find the IP address is copy this uh, name that's already there to begin with and then paste it into the uh, another tab of the web browser and add .local. And that's going to bring up the uh, web page hosted on the device and that will give you the IP address here. So copy that and go back to the YAML file and add it in as a use address field under the uh, Wi-Fi settings. And so that's going to allow you to change this name here and then the bulb still going to be connected uh, to by ESP Home through the uh, IP address we just entered. And the convention for the name is that you don't want any uppercase letters, you don't want any underscores, you don't want any spaces, you're going to use dashes instead. So this is one of my kitchen bulbs, so we'll just name it Kitchen Bulb 10. And then the next thing would be friendly name. And here is where you want to use uh, spaces, uppercase letters, and everything. Um, so there we go. Now you've done all your renaming. When you add this in the uh, Home Assistant, you're not going to have to do any more. This is all going to be automatically uh, effective for every entity. The only other thing that I'd recommend that you rename is the actual YAML file. Because um, if you don't, it's going to show up in the ESP Home dashboard as this generic name. Um, so go ahead and head to the Windows Explorer or whatever you're using. And then use the same name from the YAML file. And then that way it's going to show up properly in the ESP Home dashboard as the name that you want. The only thing I like to do and I'd probably recommend for you as well is go back in, edit the file. And I like to set a uh, manual IP address here. Um, so you can set that all through your secrets file. Um, so I've already set this before and I've got it all ready to go. Um, so with that, go ahead and install, do it wirelessly and it's going to build. Give it some time. It's going to, it may take a while to build, especially if you're on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, once it does, it'll upload to the bulb and then it's going to try and uh, load the logs. But again, it always prioritizes the use address, IP address. In my case, that's not the IP address anymore. So you need to uh, head back to the YAML file and edit it again and just take out the use address field because um, again you only need that to flash for the first time and then after that it'll either connect by MDNS because now this name matches what the firmware on the bulb has or it's going to be able to find it through the IP address that you manually set here. And now that we flash the firmware without the use address that's the wrong IP now we get the logs um, so everything should be set up 
Let's head over to Home Assistant and see what it looks like. We got a notification, so that's a good sign. Uh, let's check it out, new device. And there we go, Kitchen Bulb 10, which is what we named it. Uh, so go ahead and add it. And uh, you can search Kitchen Bulb 10 and ESP Home Card. And here we go, Kitchen Bulb 10 is the Home Assistant name as well. All the entities all have Kitchen Bulb in the name. Both the entity name and the entity ID are gonna be based on the friendly name. So that's uh, kind of perfect, just what you would want. And that's really it for the whole process. From here, you just do whatever you would normally do in Home Assistant, add it to Lovelace, uh, create some automations, whatever. Your bulb's gonna be in ESP Home. Uh, you're always gonna be able to update right here. If ESP Home updates to a new version, you can recompile. Uh, if we update uh, the YAML file on GitHub, you're gonna automatically pull those in. Um, you got everything renamed in one step. So I think it's a pretty sweet deal. And I really like what ESP Home's doing with it. That's it for this demonstration. Uh, keep an eye out. We're going to have more products, uh, more videos, and definitely reach out. I'm here to help if you need anything.